Well, from gender to good-paying jobs, the Biden administration seems intent on destroying it all. On Joe Biden's first day in office, he killed thousands of American jobs. Joe Biden killed hundreds of Wisconsin jobs. You're talking about 10,000 jobs in the eighty, ninety thousand dollars an hour range that are gone. Joining me now is Andy Black, president and CEO of the Association of Oil Pipelines. Andy, I know the Canadians are up in arms. They've already laid all this pipe. I don't know. Are they, what are they going to do with all that pipe that they've already laid down and all the technology that's already in place? How much in terms of job losses are we looking at here? And then we're going to get to how much money is taken out of American pockets. Uh, before Wednesday had ended on President Biden's first day, 1,000 people who had been working were told they won't have jobs anymore. Another 10,000 American union jobs uh, were expected. Uh, they expected good paying jobs that could support a family, provide health care. Those won't happen now. Well, Andy, it was showing the video of what the area around the pipeline looks like. Uh, and some of this is in Canada and other parts in the United States. But what happens with all of that infrastructure, Andy, that's in place? Well, it's a symbol of a wasted opportunity. Americans would benefit from that pipeline bringing uh, Western Canadian crude oil down to America, where it's turned into products that we use every day to get us where we need to go. Now it turns out that money was wrongly spent. And by the way, Joe Biden, I should say, is bragging that he's going to create all these great union jobs. Watch. When I think of climate change, I think about jobs, good paying union jobs. Union workers have been holding this country together during this crisis. That the middle class built this country and unions built the middle class. Andy, those were all in the past month. Do you think union members who voted for Biden feel like they've been just hosed here? This is a president who said he wanted to be the most pro-union president ever. Yet on the first day, 11,000 American union workers knew they weren't going to be able to build. Uh, build back better means build. Well, Andy, the cost to the average American family, I know these are hard numbers to always quantify, but in terms of energy costs and our desire to be energy independent, which obviously this gave us an incredible boost in an already strong energy sector. But what does this mean to the average family? Is it, is it like a blip or is this significant dollars? Americans don't want to have to pay more for energy. And they, when they go to the service station to fill up with gasoline or diesel, they want to know that that fuel is there. Uh, now we have a question about whether we can expand pipeline capacity as we need for the fuels that we use in our daily lives. Uh, when we get this economy going again, people are going to be wanting to take trips to go see family in the car, take flights on vacation or see their relatives. We need to make sure that as our demand for energy grows, we're able to have pipelines bring them the fuels that they need. Without enough pipeline capacity, you either have shortages or you have higher prices. Or maybe we're all looking forward to having rolling blackouts like in California. Apparently, that's the gold standard, Andy. Just the government gets to decide who has energy and when. Maybe we can do odd and even days at the gas pump like we did in the late 70s under Jimmy Carter. Andy, Great to see you tonight, and we hope we can somehow turn that around. But people have to know what they're getting into.